And now sports with Dan Lindblad. The second of back-to-back -back Champions Tour tournaments tees off on Monday. A lot of the same names from last week at Buffalo Ridge are back in competition with some big name additions hopping in on the fun as well. Of course, all eyes will be fixed on Phil Mickelson making his Champions Tour debut. The five-time major winner going on to the course there at Ozarks National to keep his game sharp as he missed the playoffs this year but is still working toward competing in the U.S. Open, that being in the middle of September. Mickelson joins Ernie Els and Jim Furyk in this year's rookie class and says he's ready for a strong showing in the Ozarks. I expect to play well, not because uh, of anything other than I've been playing well, but it's a whole other thing, again, against tough competition to, to shoot low scores. And so uh, it's not going to be easy, and, and I just uh, I want to get my I want to get my game sharp. But I know I know how good the players are. I, I've played against these guys for a lot of years. You know, I've, I've run up against him for a long, long time since he was a little kid on tour. So um, now he's a little kid again. We saw it last week, so many guys playing so well. Um, I know Jim Furyk came out and won his first week, but his reaction was, man, it's hard to win out there. <laughs> and um, it's going to be tougher with Phil now. And here are some of the notable tee times tomorrow. John Daly teeing off at 1040 with Tim Heron and David McKenzie. The champ from Buffalo Ridge, Shane Birch, tees off at 158. And look at that group. Mickelson with Retief, Goosen, and Steve Stricker at 220. Els, Love the Third, and Jerry Kelly at 231. The tour wrapping up play in Massachusetts with the Northern Trust, and it was all Dustin Johnson, and we're talking all Dustin Johnson. He shoots 30 under par for the tournament, 11 shots ahead of second place Harris English. The score tied the second lowest score under par in a 72-hole event since 1950. The win also launched him up to number one in the FedEx Cup standings and helped him reclaim the number one ranking for the first time in more than a year. The St. Louis Cardinals wrapped up a four-game set with the Reds on Sunday. More importantly, the Birds got a good look at what they've enjoyed over the past few years while getting a glance at what's on the horizon. Final game of the series on Sunday, just a single game here, no doubleheader. The Reds jumped on Ponce early. Eugenio Suarez with a blast that goes over the visiting bullpen. Reds go up 2-0. Harrison Bader, he's been super shaky this shortened season, but he was solid here, a big hit. That just clears the 400 and dead center. Two run home run is second, and we are tied at two. Bottom three, same score. Yachty, he went four of five today. This one of his RBI singles. It brings in Paul Goldschmidt. Cards are in front. And then in the seventh, we've seen it at Hammonds, and we've been waiting for it at Bush. And the wait is now over. Dylan Carlson with a bomb to the home bullpen. His first as a major leaguer. And Yachty, the first to congratulate him as he touches home plate cards, get the win 6-2. Going into Sunday, the Royals were 2-2 two two on the current homestand. Uh, winning the finale against the Twins would give them something to build on before they head across the state to Bush to play the Cardinals on Monday. Down 4-0 in the third, Jorge Soler takes Devin Smeltzer down the left field line. Hunter Dozier, Mibris, Villora both score, and the deficit is cut right down the middle. We jump ahead to the ninth. It's 4-3, and Nelson Cruz, he sure loves seeing the Royals, doesn't he? His 15th home run against the Royals since joining Minnesota in 2019. That makes it 5-3. Royals trying for a comeback. Michael Franco drops one down the line. Dozier able to score on it, so that brings the tying run to the plate. But Alex Gordon flies out harmlessly to left as the Twins take care of the Royals with a final of 5-4. The Indianapolis 500 is one of the premier races in American sports. It's always been held Memorial Day weekend. Well, like most sports in 2020, it will be an exception this year. The race run today, again, no fans in attendance. Just six laps in, James Davison having some trouble, and by that, I mean his tire explodes. We've got fire and a new meaning to the term burning rubber. Lap 93, Connor Daly spins coming off turn four, creating a cloud of smoke. Behind him, Oliver Askew makes heavy contact with the inside wall. Askew got out of his car, but needed a bit of a moment to catch his breath, and understandably so. Later in the race, just five laps left, Spencer Pigott spins out, and you can first see what's going to happen next. Makes hard contact with the entry to pit road. He would climb out of his car, but did need some assistance. That would cause a less than thrilling finish under caution. Takuma Sato becomes a two-time Indy 500 winner and celebrates with a cold glass of 2%. Just a little patchwork out there at the Monster Mile. NASCAR regular season winding down. 17 to go, Jimmy Johnson. Trying to hold off Kevin Harvick, but through three and four, 
Harvick would retake the lead. He won both stages and takes the checkered flag as well. He's the regular season champ. That's also the 700th win for the Ford car. Martin Truex Jr. finishing second. And a lot of excitement about Phil Mickelson being in town. The only thing, we wish we could have spectators out there. No spectators are allowed. It is uh, one of a very strange year for the uh, mm -hmm. sports fans, that's for sure. Dan, thanks. A final word after this.